Hi there, welcome back. I am Frozen Melon. Today I'll be continuing on with this Druid Arena deck that we have three copies of the Nightmare Amalgam plus the Iron Dwarf, Dark Iron Dwarf as well. Unfortunately, last game, yeah, eventually we just kind of got outclassed in regards to value after a good ball clear and we couldn't keep the game going from there. So let's jump to this next one and see how we do. <laughs> okay, so our fourth game here is against a mage. We'll see how we get along with this one. I must protect the wild. So technically that's a two, two or a three, and a four. I guess I'll toss this because I don't need the silence. I could have kept it and just traded it later, but trading it now makes no difference. Slightly better four, I've got nothing on board. So, let's see how we fare. What is it? They have one drop. I will coin out my hero power for this because that getting value and it doesn't look like we've got anything else to do anyway. The Major probably would have done the same there. It's just one of those cards where you don't really want it to stay on board and they don't even have a turn 2 play as well to follow that up, so it makes no difference to me. How can I help you? Okay, so we get to that card. I will make the trade here now. Because I think that might be, would it be a good idea. Hmm. Let me tell you that story. I'm going to see if they're going to be greedy about it. Life is good at the installment. <laughs> <laughs> well, so they get off it. Oh, they got one of its itself as well. So, people, this is why you shouldn't be greedy on that card. I just want to point that out to you. That is why you don't be greedy on that card. Like I'm not a fan of it, and I said My this sort of royal librarian seems getting more and more of a card that people are playing these days. Oh. Okay. So. Right there. I could have pushed face, but that's on one health, so there's no need for me I to do that. To so he's committing to picking that over two turns. So that is probably a good sign for me. So those are the two that got buffed. Do you call that a Play this out. He's going to ping it again, he'll ping it again. That's absolutely fine here. It's just a slow play again. And yeah, I'm going to make this trade, so... So you can waste another two mana to ping my board again down if he wants. That's a no. Luckily we got the answer for that as well in hand. My duty is to the king. For the king! Get rid of that off the board now, because I don't want to do anything else and start pushing to face. We got good value now. So the only thing I'm more scared of is like a giant big taunt minion. <laughs> So I want to buff these both as much as possible. You get hit and you get hit. And I'm going to use my hero power here and start throwing some through. Because he's got flame strike, I would assume they would have played it last turn rather than playing that card. But this should close out the game now. Pay 
Attention, class. I'm ready to learn. That was a quick one. I so say we'll jump into the next one there. Let's see how we get along there. Malfurion versus Jaina. Okay, we're getting another mage as well. Got a turn two, a turn three. We're gonna to toss that and hope to get something else. And we got a four to buff something into it. It's good. Now, I know the Hoss Knight, even with the nurse, they still quite haven't set things up at the moment into what we're expecting, and especially if you're kind of playing world quite a lot like myself, just essentially the meta is dictated by the quickest deck out there. So irrelevant of what other decks you want to play, the one fastest deck mm. is the one that will dominate everything, at which point everything else has to be either quicker or as quick as that deck. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just when you get decks that essentially have so many cards that kind of synergize really well together. Like a good example of that would be just how many cards Mage has got that relate to secrets in some way, shape or form. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I said it can make some really good decks really viable, but again if you're playing in things like Standard you don't really have to worry about it at all, it's not like one of those decks will ever kind of come awry, they're only released within an expansion. And Blizzard tends to have this habit of only kind of thinking about the cards within their current cycle, not outside of it. Play a little bit greedy here and see what they're going to do. So I'm assuming this trade is happening. Yeah. I think this is the play. It's not attacking into it, but removing the Divine Shield. It does make you think there. So I could attack into it, but I don't want to keep this alive as much as I can to try and get as many buffs. But I don't want to play my hand out too quickly because it looks like they're trying to play for a value game as well. So I want to try and eke out as many resources. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to make this trade, I can still hero power next turn and just play my three mana card and keep this in hand for later. Right into my core. So, with this being the case, now I can do this instead. So I got two extra buffs out of that card, and I have to make him ping on this turn. And this getting two of the buffs is actually quite important. So we've got a three and a three if I need to next turn, or whatever I draw might be a good idea.
okay. I don't think this will do too, too much, even if they do sort of reduce their hand size. This is a bit of a problem, but I don't think they'll have any more spells, because spells are hard to come by in Arena. So there, it's just a 3-3 three, three on board that might not do anything. In which case... I'm going to play it like this. I'm playing it like this because I'm believing my opponent won't have any more spells. I think that was their spell turn, hence why they used the coin and what they did there. But, mm. That is actually not a bad combo, but again, stuff like this is just too slow for Constructed, and there are so many decks I would love to try in Constructed that you just can't do in either format at the moment. Because if you have seen the sort of minion mage deck we had previously, there's that one elemental that allows you to reduce the cards of cards that didn't start in your hand. Now that actually works with the corruption mechanic because those cards didn't start beforehand in your hand. So it is kind of like a really unique way. Two axes, twice as good. Yeah, done. Yeah, or elemental. It was one of those things I was debating if that was going to happen or not. For the wild. I don't really want to play this as a 10-5, I want to play it as a 5-10. So, it probably won't be played next turn. Unless they play something really big, like a big taunt this turn, and don't do anything with it. That's actually good enough to rush into it. I mean, yeah, it does deal with the water elemental by itself, but it'll hit into something else and he can trade, keeping the water elemental useful anyway. So I'm not getting value that way from it. I wonder. Uh, we'll see what my opponent does. I'm thinking that that was like one of the biggest minions they might have had in hand. No, it wasn't. He also had the same card I did. I think that pretty much seals up the game. Some out of resources, I have no extra cards in hand. I've lost too much to the board. But I said we'll try and play it out, hopefully. Yeah, I might get lucky. But I'm assuming they got some like Pyroblast in hand or something like that, if they got doing like this sort of play. Or at least maybe like another ball clear. You? Okay. So it takes me down to seven and they can ping for fireball lethal if they need to. So I do want to use the hero power here. I think playing this and then how I trade is kind of very important. But it just taking out the biggest thing on the field makes no difference for the trades I'm thinking of doing. So that's there. Down to the water elemental. I think doing that here. And as Power Blast, there's no difference. We'll play this out. I wasn't too sure I wanted to keep that on the on the board, but I want to get as much out as possible. Just I think that's the 
play that will give me the biggest chance to win. I said if they had four mana left over, they should have just fireballed face. It would have made sense to do so. We're being attacked! And again, I want to give him as least armor as possible. I've got to hit to it anyway. I can't kill that minion anyway, so I'm assuming this is where we lose now on this turn. If we don't, then I think their play may have been a bit too aggressive. They have me beat outright regards to resources. What you're doing by going face is giving me the opportunity to talk to something. So that's why they did that. They had some damage in hand they would like to use. So that's game. All right, so if you do enjoy these videos, so do leave a like and subscribe. So unfortunately, that is one win, one loss for this one. And then I will see you in the next game.